Hey guys, Tyrep here bringing you a 1v1 today. We are on Vilshanka. Playing for today, spawning on the right, we have the Angry Dutchman. Playing a Soka W, and his loadout is Elite Armor. Grand Offensive. And Overwatch. Nice offensive on the left, we have Apathy Prime playing as US Forces. Straight away locking into Heavy Cavalry. Making use of those sandbags, plopping them down on his cutoff. Slightly unusual capping order here from the Angry Dutchman. They are quite aggressively right off the bat, not even capping his own fuel and making a charge onto the cutoff. In this case though, the sandbags should help him out quite nicely. Usually it's a bit of a risk. And not trying to dive in the whole way. Here comes a rifleman from the other side. This play from the Angry Dutchman uh, might not work out so well for him here in the early game. Stim is slowly picked off. And once they're gone, the Rifleman should be able to bully the Vox Trinities away. Two models, quite low health. Oh wow, I'm surprised he retreated there. Now that's left the door open for a loss. And that's exactly what's going to happen. The Fox Trinities do win. Definitely should have kept uh, the three model squad in there to continue to fight. Will he be able to get the decap in time though? Just in time. So it uh, ends up somewhat working out. I mean, he's still very slow connecting his fuel point. But did at least get the cutoff for it. A short period there. Forgot to mention ranks, I believe. Both these players in the mid 80s. With their respective factions in terms of rank. And it looks like the Angry Dutchman going for a three. Looks to be a build here into his tech truck. Into the 221. I have been playing a little bit with this commander again myself. And I've found uh, what I've been experimenting with is two Fox, uh, I mean, uh, two Stern Pios. So I've got Fox Grenadier, then Stern Pio, and then into Truck, into the 221 against US Forces. And I've found it to be quite successful, actually, as long as you're not up against the WC 51, which is, of course, <laughs> just way too strong. <laughs> Uh, the penetration on its gun and the damage it spits out just bullies the 221 before it gets the upgrade. It's no fun. But yeah, at that earlier timing, uh, it's just so effective. You hit the riflemen before they, you know, close to vet one, so you don't have to worry about snares so much at that earlier timing. It makes a big difference. You can drive in aggressively like this and not have to worry about the snares. That's exactly what we're about to see here. Oh no, they dropped down too quickly to get the AT grenade off. Now the 221 going for the chase down. Oh, will he get it? A little bit slow on the chase. Looks like it's going to make it home. Close call though. Rifleman charging out. They are very, very close to V1 themselves. A little bit of damage onto the 221. A couple of penetrating bullets. No, nope, not quite getting it. Nice call there for uh, Apathy Prime. And that was a pretty fast V1 on the 221 now. And so I think it's like 10% uh, accuracy at that. As well as the smoke. Jumpai's jumped onto the cutoff there. And this is where putting sandbags on your cutoff can backfire they can give you some uh, your opponent some defense as they go for your cutoff which is why in most cases I'm generally not a fan of them and we did see them uh, work out reasonably well in that early engagement right at the start of the game going for the mechanized regiment interesting We see the captain from Apathy Prime. I wonder if we're going to see the AA half track. 
No, I'm going for the ambulance right now. Okay, a few, uh, just, uh, a few units capping across the map at the moment. Ready to execute. No enemy. The mobile command has been Truck set. is up. The static post we do is sometimes see upgrade. players not opt to go for the 223 upgrade straight away when playing uh, the, this commander alongside the mechanized. Just so they can get out their next light vehicle that much more quickly. Because of course leave it quite vulnerable. You know, a 221 so lightly armored compared to the 223. Susceptible. Okay, snare off. Stempire's right there for the repairs, so no big deal. Oh, going for a double officer tick here, Apathy Prime. Okay. I was like, I saw some manpower disappear down here. Wasn't sure where it's going, but it's going into the Lieutenant Tick. Interesting. Come around the corner on the Stumpies there, trying to force them away. Stumpies reposition. Captain gets too low, and that's a full retreat through the center. Apathy Prime really struggling here at the moment. No light vehicle and no answer to the 221s, just allowing it to control the map. And this is why sometimes it's a good idea to go for the lieutenant first instead of uh, the captain, even with these double officer builds, because going for the lieutenant first gives access to the bazooka, which can be quite helpful in dealing with the 221. And also the 50 cal, which is you know good as a light in the light anti tank role against things like the 221. And also quite good long range, helping you force away the squads. Of course, the captain does have access to the AT gun, which is very strong against the larger uh, light vehicles. But oftentimes, in a large 1v1 map, moving an AT gun around from side to side not terribly effective against light vehicles, so it can be hard to really contain your opponent's light vehicle just with an anti tank gun. Not always successful going for the early M1 with this kind of style. You can see here now that he's got the bar just ripping through the health on that 221. Angry Dutchman very, very late. Going for the looks here. Wow, that is a super late looks. I was not expecting him to go for that at all. Just just like missing his timing completely. I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe he went for it as insurance, just in case he needed to deal with his opponent's light vehicle, but see so yeah, Apathy Prime not going for that, going for the double officer tech instead. So he didn't need the Puma. Yeah, making that decision to pull the trigger on the looks this late, a little bit strange. But still should be pretty effective, given that with the double officer tech, he's not that likely to be up against the steward, especially at this super late timing. So, you know, you can have like one light vehicle on one side of the map, a light vehicle on the other, and that will split the focus of the AT gun and make it very difficult to cap across the map. And, yeah, now, after getting his second light vehicle, he goes for the upgrade. Yeah, missing a, uh, quite a few timings here. That's the angry Dutchman. Bazooka connecting there with the 223. Pretty heavy damage on that. Might pay now to upgrade the truck as well. Double light vehicles. Can be very helpful to have that upgrade. So just back them back here and forget about them. Leave them to repair, and that's exactly what he's going for now. The AT gun got some nice hits in there. Two shots on the looks. That's what you want. 
slow it down. Require even more repairs. Also have uh, weapon racks picked up here by Apathy Prime. A few bars. Bazookas on the rear echelons. So he should be alright between the bazookas on the lieutenant, the rear echelon and the AT gun. He should be able to contain this double light vehicle pressure pretty effectively. And this is maybe where the Angry Dutchman are getting that looks so late. Just gave Apathy Prime so much more time to field his counters. Good dodge on the concussion grenade from behind the haystacks. The cavalry has arrived. Form up. The enemy is overrunning one of our capture points. Looks like he's gone for single bars on most of these squads. Bazookas, double bazookas on the rear echelon though, so that's good for them. MG in the center. Says it's got light cover there. But that could Turned to negative cover quite easily, I would say. Now we're going for a 50 cal. He's had an awkward amount of resources here. If he backs himself, you know, he could get a medium tank out quite quickly from this position. But instead, he's going to try and solidify it. Go for a machine gun. Which could, you know, delay a medium tank rush, but a safer option for sure. No uh, STGs on this squad, so this rifle squad free to approach. Looks coming down here though, knows that the two sources of anti-tank are quite far away. Getting some damage in, here they come though, and he's uh, lingering a little bit too long. Luckily the AT gun misses the first shot, and the second. Looks going to get out of there taking zero damage. A bit slow now to push up with the rest of this anti-tank as well. There we go, closing in finally on the squad. The echelon there. Going with the bazookas. Oh, both connecting. Got a chunk of damage there. And now the 223 can use to is the resource cache. No, it briefly cancels it. Is he going to try to send that back onto the battlefield? Maybe maybe he was hoping to get in the fuel sector, but it was actually in the uh, cutoff sector. Keep it up. Looks like that was the case. So it's going to speed his progress towards a medium tank rapidly here. But he still has to put down a Shreya at some stage. Looks like Apathy Prime has uh, started his major tech. Ooh, late retreat, no retreat. What's he doing? Run and gun, chase the road. A little bit late on reaction there. And they do get away. Late retreat going unpunished. If he started their run and gun early, I think he would have got it. AT gun doing a pretty good job of taming the looks so far. Only two kills on that. Did inflict a lot of damage to the squads in the south, but yeah, not converting it into manpower bleed. Use of high explosive anti-tank ammunition is authorized. Managing to jump onto the fuel point here and a second machine gun coming in for the angry Dutchman, which is kind of interesting. But this timing, you know, he's putting down his tech truck. Try and save that manpower for a squad of Obersoldaten. Instead, uh, going for another machine gun. Well, we have seen machine gun spam being pretty uh, effective on this map. And Apathy Prime doesn't have any indirect fire at the moment. I suppose he, you know, has major artillery, but that's about it. And the off-map smoke is quite expensive. So not a super effective way of dealing with the double MGs. We're losing a capture point. Oh, a T gun left uh, undefended. Not going in for the chase down though. I think that's a little bit of a mistake by the angry Dutchman. Looks like he's busy trying to control his looks up in the north though. 
Bazooka's chasing that down. Tank support is here. Sherman ready. And here comes the Sherman. And that's going to be tough for the Angry Dutchman to deal with. So yeah, the looks hasn't been super effective. It's maybe paid itself off in terms of map control. And that does mean that Sherman arrives quite a significant margin before Panzer IV. Could do a lot of damage to Nora Kit and building one now. But yeah, that means the Angry Dutchman going to have to concede a lot of territory to the Sherman. Let's see how aggressive Apathy Prime's going to be with it though. So far, not too much. Tune line right there. And yeah, now that he's had to go for the Rakitin as well, means an Angry Dutchman not going to have Obers anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be tough to shoot that squad from that angle. Two layers of sandbags in between them. Good connection from the side though. Here comes the Rakitin, looks hiding behind the shrubs here, doing some attack rounds. Kitten missing there on the Sherman. A T gun wheeling its way into position. Oh, good connection there. How does he even have sight with that machine gun at the moment? Not sure. Oh, a T gun connected, so does a bazooka looks on the run and there we go panzer 4 coming in but he didn't suffer too much at the hands of the sherman would be you know quite easy to find yourself in a scenario where the sherman goes hunting and knocks out their looks and then you're quite far behind after that but didn't end up happening in this particular match and it looks like apathy prime Went for the tick on the captain now and going for the pack outs. The pack outs are very, very strong on this map, I found time and time again. Kind of park it close to the center, relatively safe, and reaches the entire map. Very, very hard to deal with. Ooh, we're getting in some trouble, no retreat. And goes down to the barred up rifles frontally. It looks like he was trying to destroy the sandbag that they were hiding behind so the suppression could come through. But unsuccessful. Here comes a Sherman now. Looks in the north, forcing away a lot of US forces troops there. Oh man, these rifles behind the sandbags doing work. MG gonna go down. Here comes the Panzer IV though, no AT gun support and on high explosive rounds. The Sherman a little bit vulnerable. AT scrambling for Amethy Prime. Major artillery. Pack out we. Coming from the base. Equipping a few more bars. Looks in the north. No follow up though. Could come forwards with the AT gun. Go for the kill on this decrewed machine gun. But maybe he's forgotten about it. Does he have sight? No he's, got, no, he's got sight of it. I'm very surprised he's not going for the kill on it. A T gun sitting up. Still no kill. Okay. Mistake. Not that it's going to be that hard for him to deal with the machine guns now that he's got the pack out. So, however, should have a significantly easier time with that. And you can see, like, top corners of the map. Apathy Prime with a uh, significantly larger army here. So much so that he could probably afford to leave his Sherman on armor piercing to help deal with Panzer IV and just let his infantry do the heavy lifting in the anti-infantry department. A capture point is being overrun. Doesn't really need the uh, high explosive rounds on the Sherman that badly to uh, win these engagements. Oh, coming 
Ford's taking a load of damage. Before it did get upgraded with the Panzer Commander. Worth noting. Don't know if that's an attack ground or if we can see there, but either way, it does connect with the Sherman. That one was an attack ground. Ooh, a T gun quite low here. Panzer IV connecting directly, but low on health itself. Hoping to get the D crew. Drops the artillery. A T gun activates the AP ammo. If he gets this attack round, oh man, that could have been the kill, but he's going to lose the A T gun. In return, that was a gamble. If he knocked out the P4 there, that would have been huge, but he ends up losing the A T gun. It's a big pickup. For the angry Dutchman. Gonna allow him a lot more freedom, and that's exactly what he's exploiting. Looks coming in from the side. Gonna do some damage right from him, closing the distance, looking for the snare. Not gonna get it. Sherman coming down here now, though. Before, already pretty well repaired. Doesn't even have the uh, sweeper on that. The repair time's pretty low anyway. Tank gun. Not even in range of the uh, mechanized HQ either. Oh, walking Stuka going to be op the option for uh, the Angry Dutchman. I think that's a reasonable choice. It's against the uh, pack out, so it's always a strong option. And it looks like Apathy Prime is rebuilding the AT gun instead of trying to go for a Jackson here. So, kind of playing into the Angry Dutchman's hand. He, of course, doesn't know. There's a uh, walking stuka in production, but it is going to work out pretty well for the Angry Dutchman. EP's around 100 lead for the Angry Dutchman at the moment, but neither player getting too low yet. Big damage from the looks there. That 50 cal just getting ripped to pieces. And I think at the moment the split should be looks and Rakitin on one side, Panzer IV on the other. Looks like he's now moving the Rakitin across. And triple cap at the moment against Apathy Prime. So he's going to try to push into the center, but we do have a machine gun covering it at the moment. This is where Apathy Prime uh, can maybe do with some smoke or some recon. Does have the uh, Major, can use the recon flight. It's not too expensive and this can be helpful. Oh, stupid. Oh, not too successful, only one kill. Quite a lot of health damage. P4 coming in from the north. Gonna catch. Uh, yeah, T gun out of position, but Apathy Prime already pulled that back. Oh wow, he did end up dropping the artillery there. Somewhat strange. Before continuing to push forward, Sherman. A little bit slow to mobilize, but pops the AP ammo. As the four pulls back though nicely. Sherman through the center. Blows. Looks in the south though, getting some nice damage done. And Epithy Prime still on the drain. Looks like he's been saving up for the Pershing. That's a pretty big power spike. Angry Dutchman not well equipped to deal with the Pershing. Only one Rakitin and the Panzer IV. A big push from Epithy Prime here could seal the game. Getting close to his pop cap limit here as well. I don't think he'll quite. Well, like if he's fully reinforced, he won't quite be able to afford a Panther. He wants to use that as an option. But yeah, really needs to uh, walk and stuke it to convert into some big damage here at the moment. 
Oh, Pershing pushes the repair squads away from the Sherman. We'll slow things down a little bit. So far, I don't think the pack outs are... Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Eight kills, nearly vet two. I didn't think it was that impactful, but clearly it's been stacking up some kills. I haven't noticed. I don't think it's got any wipes yet, though. Damage there from the Rakitin. Attack round wars through the shrubs. In comes the walking Stuka. Ooh, ooh, gets the D crew. Big damage. Almost takes down the Major as well. And P4 coming in behind this. Look, gonna look for the kill. Oh, and he connects first shot. And maybe even on the move. Huge. Just like that, the AT gun's down. Getting in a nice position, he backs towards it. Mission coming forwards now, though. Showing that the back is completed on the repairs. Machine gun in jeopardy, goes down. Mission connecting. Squad coming forwards, looking for the snare. Targeting the AT gun. Sherman coming in from the other side. This is where if he pushed around the corner here with the captain and the Sherman a little bit earlier, this could be the GG scenario. If he takes down that Rakitin, Pershing can just run amok and take down the Panzer IV. But instead he was just a little bit too slow jumping back into the Sherman there and bringing in the support play. Sitting back, going for some repairs on the Pershing here. And yeah, this, this game's about to get a lot harder for him because here comes the Panther. And with this commander, you get access to the heat shells. I think the penetration and the damage. And on the Panther, that is nasty against the Pershing. Makes it, uh, it's, you know, a pretty even matchup generally. Actually, advantageous towards the Panther. Stuka coming through. Oh, what? AT infantry. Is that the lieutenant? Getting obliterated there. Here we go. Walking Stuka. Getting the job done. Nearly V1 after that. 14 kills. Mediums. Trade and blows up in the north. Major gets them neutralized. Oh, both connecting and penetrating every shot. A T gun wheeling forwards for Apathy Prime. Both missing. M1 coming through. And missing as well. Sherman one shot from death. Connecting. Attack round. Oh, misses again. I think that was just a regular shot. A little bit lucky there for an angry Dutchman. Both shots missing. Bazooka's connecting with the Panther, zoning it away. Here comes the Pershing. Oh, Panther connecting nicely, long range. Oh, I was like, how did he do so much damage there? But he used the M93 armor piercing round, which does bonus damage. I think it's 240 damage. I can't remember exactly, but yeah, it is a good chunk more. And in some cases, it doesn't make sense to use it. But in this case, you know, with bazookas connecting, maybe bouncing, adding up to some unusual uh, damage points against the higher of the target of the Panther, it does make sense to use it. Generally, uh, it's more of like a finishing blow. You can fire that through, you know, shock blockers like buildings and stuff. And does have uh, more range as well. In a regular shot. But yeah, that's alright. He does have plenty of munitions, so why not spend them? The MG through the center. 
minor connection. But it does allow the walking stuka to get vet 1, and I think it gets 10% cooldown at vet 1, so. Makes a difference. Ooh. D34, you can decrude there in the north, but. Unable to capitalize on that. Oh, and we've got grenades ticked by Apathy Prime now. I think that's a good idea. You know, he's got the munitions. Here's the uh, manpower and the fuel. Close to his pop cap limit. That's a very good timing for the grenades. And he has closed the gap in the VP war. Every Dutchman struggling. Even though he's picking up some really nice wipes with the walking Stuka. Struggling a little bit for territory control. His infantry is just uh, not quite as strong against the double bar bully vetted riflemen. It's generally where Obers can kind of fill the gap. He went for the double machine guns instead. Double machine guns are, you know, generally quite good for holding on to territory, but maybe not the strongest for pushing compared to Obers. And, you can, and the good thing about Obers as well is, like, if you catch the eight team weapons out of position, they can just charge forwards and do some good damage to them. Three and the D crew allow you to be a lot more aggressive than the machine guns. Yeah, there we go. Red echelon smoke into the center. Maybe we're going to look for the capture. Oh, he's, oh, he's already got that. Why did he smoke there then? It's just allowing the vulture heads to cap with a... Uh, taking any damage I was like oh smoking in the scene he's got a capture just not even realizing that he already held the point it's pretty funny oh that's what went down very very quickly Pushing, connecting nicely Oh, Panther spinning around in front of the AT gun. It's two shots, both penetrating, and they neither of them were against the rear armor either. Looks thanks. Here comes a walking Stuka though. And the AT gun. Moderate damage. Only one model down though. Tech rounds through the shrubs once again. You got not returning fire here though. Ooh, big connection from the pack out. Uh, artillery dropped on the machine gun. But Apathy Prime does cap the center. Sherman heads up to the north, chases away the looks. Oh, on the pack alley now going after the machine gun, forcing that away. Pack alley. 14 kills now. It hasn't been a target yet for the walking Stuka. And because it's, it's quite slow to move this thing around, it's vulnerable to, to getting decrudes very easily by the walking Stuka. That's a brave Panzer IV going to go head to head with the Pershing. Do you have the Raketten nearby? Trading blows. Hasn't activated the APM on this yet. Okay, activates the heat shells now, but takes a main gun critical in big trouble. Smoke dropped on the Raketten. Raketten connecting, though. Squad trying to close the distance for the snare. Panther very, very late to the party, standing nearby and not going for the chase down. But coming in now, this is risky. Goes for an attack ground and uh, pulls back. Luckily, didn't take a snare from this squad that was standing nearby in the smoke until now. So we're in a pretty safe position, not going to get chased down by the AT here. Stuka Barrage coming through. Not quite. Just caught him right on the edge. Need to be a tiny bit deeper to catch the pack outs are there. But yeah, just a little bit slow there by the Angry Dutchman. The Panther was standing nearby during all that. He was a little bit faster bringing that in. Could have got the Pershing killed there. Also a little bit unlucky that is... P4 took a main gun crit. Uh, 
Stradi dropped on the panther here. There's that fake smoke. Oh, there's the artillery. There's some new tries up there as well. Oh, we're getting in some trouble in front of the Sherman. 50 count also chipping in for some damage. We're really pulling that back. Sherman a little bit slow here to re-engage. Was safe to in that situation where King got chased away, he knew that the Panther had a damaged engine. Could have got in there for some damage on the looks. Maybe even got the kill. P4 back up to full now though. With this commander you do also have access to the emergency repairs. So it can be useful just to pop that, you know, you don't have that many things to spin your munitions in this commander. And that heals you for 400 health, so not a full heal, but a good chunk. And uh, can minimize the downtime on your tanks. It does come in, uh, I think, 5 CP, so generally maybe like a little bit too late for light vehicles. Maybe towards the tail end of their time on the battlefield, but very, very helpful. Or medium tank, especially like your first medium tank. Maximizing the impact of that. Oh, there we go, Major. Lights the dust, walking Stuka connecting there. Nearly vet 2 now, 25, no, 23 kills. More attack rounds. <laughs> Prime. did actually rebuild the lieutenant so it is occupying a good chunk of his pop cap now might have been able to squeeze in another tank otherwise you know go for the d crew and wouldn't impact his reinforcements too much going above 100 Machine. A little bit low after a few shots. There you go. Panther now taking damage as well. The kitten is nearby, but still behind the sight blocker. Let's use the attack round on that. He's out of camouflage and white phosphorus coming in now. Good option. It's these team weapons. Looking for some nice damage there. Getting coming forwards. In front of the Sherman. That's a full retreat. Okay, up there, Prime pushing forwards now. A few low health units here, walking Stuka. Oh, no, not paying attention to the repairing squad. That goes down the blink of an eye. Crew, Stuka did minor damage. Uh, yeah, nothing like losing your vested up stern pies. That's a big, big loss for him. Big mistake as well. Okay, repairs completed. This could be a time for Apathy Prime to get in there and do some damage. All these tanks are not at full strength. Kitten's still out the back uh, awaiting heals, and that's actually something the Angry Dutchman hasn't done yet. Despite being close to his pop cap, still hasn't put down his battle group HQ for healing in his base. A little bit strange. I know that, you know, he's got a good chunk of munitions, can rely on those med kits, but. It's just nice to, you know, not have to worry about doing that extra micro step. Maybe free up some munitions for some more uh, artillery. There's Panzer IV. It looks like he has used the emergency repairs on that, by the way. Operating without the Stoom Pioneers. Sentry Grenade expecting the squad to be charging forwards and does allow to complete the capture in the center. And he did plop the 223 on the munitions point up here in the north, which is kind of an interesting play. 
Stuka. The AT gun. Oh, and good connection. Wipes that out. I have noticed from the Angry Dutchman, most of his walking Stuka barrages are close to a straight line, so Apathy Prime at this point should consider dodging to the side and steer backwards. Definitely there is a pattern there. And he should uh, capitalize on that by dodging sideways. Man, this is a uh, long battle. Neither player unable to finish able to finish the job. And truly uh, explode and finish the match out here. There have been opportunities, but I haven't really dove on them. Move on them, that's not really dives, right? It's got charging forwards here. P4 coming in from the other side. Dropping the artillery. Ooh, big shot though. Pershing nearly gets the wipe. Ultimately, he does not materialize in the kill on the AT gun. Oh, there's some good shots in long range though. survive <laughs> yeah that's an almighty blob coming out heading towards the south doesn't have uh, any AT support down there though so uh, the looks should be able to repel them and Stuka Barrage this time actually going uh, diagonally Looks nicely. Yeah, it looks just ripping in here. Could also activate. Or maybe he has. Is that just a passive? I thought. Oh, maybe it's not appearing in the uh, ability bar because the crew appears activated, but it looks like he was maybe using the suppressing fire ability there. That used to be a passive. But I think you have to activate it nowadays, same as the uh, Oversold Arden one. Pretty good way of uh, handling a blob like that. Which can, you know, just charge forwards at you and continually threaten the snare. And allow your looks to sit down and really do some big damage. <laughs> okay, there we go. Apathy Prime ticking under 100, making a play for the center and the south, though. Smoke into the center. Oh, Sherman, very, very low. Panther going to be out of range. Didn't go in for the chase until too late. Doesn't pop the blitz either. Sherman coming forwards. This is very risky. Going for a two on one against the Panther. But Panther not switching its targets over to the Sherman. Oops. The Sherman gets away. Looks like these players are trying to micro in three spots at once. And the vehicle micro suffering in the north a little bit as a result. Yeah, that was a uh, Sherman kill waiting to happen. Especially after Apathy Prime brought it back in like that. Artillery dropped on the AT gun here, but he reacts. Just the scatter is super good, should be able to get away. I think we did see a uh, fault tree deer go down, however. And slowly but surely, Angry Dutchman has been losing his squads. Placing them with the squad of Overs now, however. VPs left. And on his side, you know, he's got plenty of time to work with, so he does have time to vet up those overs, even if they're not going to be super effective straight away. After taking a lot of damage from the Pershing there, looks like he used the uh, M93 round again. And he can get to the south with that. Oh, big connection. Fox it is forgotten about. In time, though, 
The drain turned against the angry Dutchman now, but yeah, he's still got around 250 remaining. Apathy Prime's going to have to be very, very careful not to lose the game here. 44 VPs left. A lot of repairs going on. Looks like the angry Dutchman finally putting down his battle group. Probably should have done that around 10 minutes ago, though. Better late than never. Now looking for the triple cap. Hope is on the battlefield coming into the center, but the machine guns there, the Shermans there, then probably not even going to be able to stick around for the neutralize. Stuka coming in now that the machine gun revealed itself, but where you hit the retreat on that. So it does not connect. But it looks like the Angry Dutchman is kind of targeting towards the retreat path. You saw the machine gun hit the retreat. Walking Stuka kind of following along that path. It's generally a solid strategy. Didn't work on this occasion. Man, P4 connecting every shot here. Going in for the kill. And he gets it. Sherman goes down. Man, that P4 got lucky there. Popping the blitz to get away now. And it's going to be successful. All those squads got uh, suppressed, so they couldn't go in for the snare on the Panzer IV. So that's a pretty big pickup for the Angry Dutchman. That's it, fellas! Knock their fucking block off. Germans have 200 points left. Kill it! Okay, here we go. Looks and Panther coming forwards. Panther up to Vet 2. Pushing a Vet 3 though. Got that big reload bonus now. And one coming quite far forwards here. Getting himself exposed. Walking Stuka firing again. He's got that Vet 2 cooldown bonus. Rocket slam very favorably though for Apathy Prime. Either side of the M1 doesn't take almost any damage. One coming forwards now aggressively on the Panther. Panther getting forced away. Looks like he once again used the M93 round there to inflict some more damage on the Panther. And I think that's one thing we haven't seen too much of the Angry Dutchman uh, use is the AP ammo on the Panther so far. Just when it's trading shots against the Pershing. Squad down. Machine gun down. Here in the north, I think. The way his machine gun's gone, don't know exactly what happened to it. P4 coming forwards. Getting aggressive. Bazooka's bouncing. A T gun nearby. He's continuing to chase. Didn't pop. Oh, he's already used the Blitz to get into this position. Now leaving his armor exposed, takes the snare. P4 gonna go down here. Pershing coming back in, a T-gun facing up, bouncing, but the Pershing finishes the job. And what a throw on the Panzer IV there. Panther coming in now behind this, walking Stuka connects nicely. A T-gun goes down, now the Panther thinking about going in for the same maneuver. Going for the Pershing, I think he still needs two shots to kill it here. Quite in range. Oh, and the snare is already cooled down. He's going in, but he can't find it. Finds the ambulance, though. It's a consolation prize. Pershing coming back in. Bazooka's on the rear armor, though. Panther in some big trouble. And Panther missing. Firing on the move. Not working out well for the Angry Dutchman at all. He loses the Panther. Pershing coming for us now. Looking for... Kill on the looks, perhaps? No, not going to go in for it. There still is a Rakitin lingering around somewhere, but what a tremendous throw from the Angry Dutchman. Going in one at a time like that with his tanks. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, it's just no good. But you see the power of the snares there. Heavy truck, waiting for deployment. Limiting the movement of the Angry Dutchman's tanks. Just leaving them as sitting ducks in the face of the bazookas. Just gave uh, the Apathy Prime so much freedom with uh, how he engaged. Fish Ambulance, walking Stuka. Raising damage. 
Oh, wants to get the capture, but too low in health, unable to do so. Going for the south, though. Obers have a bar and an LMG. Good predictive grenade there, denying the cover. I did tick down one point, down to 43 now. 42. Oh, Rakitin goes down the center. Looks like a big pack alley shot. Oh, got by the 50 cal, gets the kill. It's a big loss, that was Vet 5. And the angry Dutchman falling apart here down the straight. I think he's thinking about the King Tiger. And here it comes. The Prime at the moment doesn't have it. Oh, he doesn't know that he has a Jackson. So the King Tiger does trade pretty well against the Pershing. But backed up with the Jackson as well. I don't think this is going to go terribly well for the Angry Dutchman. Especially without his better Bracketon anymore. King Tiger's going to be a sitting duck in front of that Jackson. But yeah, I don't think he's aware that the uh, Jackson was on the field until it took that shot of the looks there. So a little bit unfortunate for him. Suppression kicking in there, denying the steal on the AT gun. Looks like the Jackson was trying to kill it there maybe, but unsuccessful. And uh, Apathy Prime going to squeak in one more AT gun. Apathy Prime looking for the triple cap here. Try and apply that VP pressure. Every Dutchman getting close to ticking under 100. Especially at this rate, it's not going to last long. long range. It's mainly one way traffic. King Tiger getting too much done. There we go. Big walking Stuka finally finishes the job on the pack Howie. It's a D crew at least. Still available for the recrew. There's a few units nearby as well. So he's maybe going to go for it with the rear echelon. And then that walking Stuka stacking up the kills up to 45 now. Falling nicely. Oh, Rakit and Recruit and dishing it out to the Jackson. Look at how long range that a uh, grenade was, though, on the rifleman. Got that uh, vetted up bonus on that. Oh, it was 25% range, but it looked like a very long one. <laughs> Downtown. Angry Dutchman has been bleeding a tremendous amount of manpower just trying to go in for these captures. The Pershing stacking up the kills. King Tiger coming back in. Jackson out for repairs at the moment. So good opportunity for the King Tiger to do some damage. Smoke into the center. No, smoke onto the machine gun. Not sure what he's trying to do behind that though. All right. well done here. King Tack is still quite low, but here come the stern pies for the repairs. No repair upgrade on them yet though. And that's one thing we didn't see from Apathy Prime really this game. Didn't make use of the rifleman mines uh, at all. Just maybe a slightly missed opportunity. Especially like around here. It's like a good amount of traffic, often a nice target for a rifleman mine. Ooh, grazes the M1. It's going to have to go back to base for some repairs and actually did some damage to the Pershing as well. Bit four on that now. A kitten inching forwards finds the Jackson forces that away. Guess he's got the extra sight from the 223 allowing him to spot that long range. And then comes the King Tiger. M1 on the run. 
Bobo's leading the charge, but they're not super well vetted here, so not that threatening yet. Here we go, hit vet 2 now, don't lose it. Oh man, Greedy Grenade loses his LMG, could lose his squad as well. And he does, that grenade, the angry Dutchman, just such a terrible idea. Cost him his oversold, Darton. Zara Kitten also going down to the rifleman in the north. And a lot of losses on his side. Doesn't really have the manpower to get a new squad to recruit these drop weapons either. He's in trouble. Both these tanks are very, very low, but you know, King Tiger's not really that mobile to go in for some kind of killing blow on them. Unlike the Panther. And he's just got no infantry left. He's going to go for the Reaper on the Rocket and definitely needs that against the Jackson. How's he, how's he going to get this one done here? Long range walking Stuka and connects. Can be delivered to cover our men. Almost knocks out the uh, rear echelon. I guess that's from the uh, signal relay on the 223 spotting. He's in the fog of war and allowing him to target the walking Stuka like that to see the signal relay getting some use there. Some hose. <laughs> now they've got a bar and a LMG. 34. Almost going down there themselves. towards the north, but a 223 is there. Everyone trying to open up on the King Tiger. But uh, not connecting so far. In fact, maybe actually targeting the infantry here by mistake. Not sure exactly. This squad does get away. Bit of a shame you couldn't you know, connect those collect some of those drop weapons that rebuilt fox tree there there easy dodge on the artillery with the M1 with the prime just slowly but surely inching his way towards victory the Dutchman just uh, bleeding a lot going for these VP caps over and over and over again not really Applying any killing blows to Empathy Prime's units. But if the Walking Stuka does connect with the M1, maybe that gives them the opportunity to get aggressive, especially if it's Rakitten's in the right position. Oh, pretty good hit. Doesn't quite get the kill though. Stuka's up in the north. It's the uh, 223. Here comes the Pershing. The kitten is there though. Make use of the smoke through the center, going for some captures. King Tiger there slamming away. There's like quite a few shots, not really finding their mark. There's this like slight elevation through the center on this road. It's just causing a few of these shots points. not to find their mark. This hasn't seen too much action uh, for a while either. Very helpful in dealing with the squad in the south. Maybe open up the capture down there instead of through the center. Imon popped uh, AP ammo, getting some good hits on the King Tiger here. It's still in range, right at the edge. Looking further damage. Backs away now. Is the 
Mark looks like the one maybe was the target. Dodges nicely. Bit five on that now, though. Fifty-three kills. I often see that in a one v one. That's like two v two numbers. It's coming around the corner, but good reposition there by Apathy Prime. Take a snare here on the looks. No, nope. went for a grenade on the squad instead. Interesting. Just getting aggressive. Here in one rotating. Here come the bazookas as well. Oh, and that could be death. And is. He one gets the finishing blow. Should be in a bit quicker. Backing away with the looks there. Oh, boy, big shot from the Pershing. Almost loses... I think they have full health. Stern pies in one shot. Comes in a kitten through the center. Oh, grenade. Oh, and it's all falling apart for the angry Dutchman. He's got nothing left. He's going in for one last stand. Activate the AP ammo on the KT. Pershing in trouble. Big shot needs to connect and might even get the kill, but it misses. And AP ammo is worn off. Bounces off the Pershing, though. Oh, bounces twice? That is just really bad luck. The King Tiger falls. This guy in the world. Well, yeah, he did get pretty lucky right at the end, but I think the game had already been decided at that point. Angry Dutchman lost a few too many units. I think the real issue, you know, it was a pretty close match, but he threw away the Panzer IV and then the Jackson back to back. And not the Jackson, the uh, Panther back to back, going in for the dive on the Pershing. And that was just so reckless, such bad throws after such cautious play from both players throughout the whole match. Very uncharacteristic. Just overall, I think this game was just like slightly too slow of a pace for me. Uh, just a few opportunities missed by just units not mobilizing and going in for the attack in time. Maybe could have sealed the game, especially the Angry Dutchman. I remember at one point there was like a panther up here. Could have gone in for the kill. But I'm not sure if it was Sherman or the, or the uh, Pershing, but either way. Missed the opportunity by not bringing it in quickly enough. And there were quite a few opportunities like that on both sides. Just uh, the players not playing at quite high enough of a pace to capitalize on. But they were fighting, you know, uh, largely across like three fronts throughout a long period of this match. So I can't blame them too much. Walking Stuka almost got the job done, did a lot of damage. Just couldn't quite... Uh, the finishing blow on a few of these D crew team weapons. Okay, he was also a pretty strong option against the double machine gun player. I thought that was a pretty good option and allowed us some good control of the center by Apathy Prime. His smoke utilization, though, not the best. Continually running into the center, getting suppressed by machine guns, always covering the center. Should be making more use of smoke earlier on in this match. Want to wrap on that, guys? If you like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off the next throwing installment. Goodbye, and good luck.